back to the channel of ProEnzo Vids, and this is my Game 2 State of Origin preview. So, um, yeah, obviously my preview comes out on Tuesday today. Um, now, I'm aware the game doesn't start until Sunday, so it's a couple of days away still. But um, because it's a lot, a lot happening this week with my schedule for YouTube, obviously, and there's a lot happening with rugby league-wise, um, yeah, might as well get it done now because... Obviously, there's the international games that are starting in the ref round with, uh, you know, New Zealand versus Tonga, Samoa versus Cook Island, etc. So that whole tipping preview and um, where I go through every every single game for there, they'll be out tomorrow for a, a full preview. Then Thursday, I've got my Super League tips. Then um, obviously on the weekend, I've got a couple of things to upload too. So might as well get this um, out and done um, out of the way. So yeah, game two, State of Origin, uh, very anticipated, very anticipated. Um, after... What we saw in game one, where I think um, it's fair to say Queensland were too good, um, winning 16 points to 10, and um, yeah, obviously that's not good for the Blues, um, being at a into the stadium and losing for the first time there to the Maroons since 2017, you know, it's obviously not a good thing to look back at, uh, since it was our home ground, and we've got a good advantage there, but it is what it is, that's the past now, it's um, only right for the Blues to turn it around and, uh, you know, Sort of just uh, forget what happened in game one and go again game two because we've got another chance to sort of make it a decider for game three. So I'm guessing the aim is now to not make it make it a three-way or not make it a 2 no start for the Queensland Maroons because if, if Queensland win game two, then, you know, it's over. Uh, the series is over. But hopefully the Blues can get the win and um, hopefully they do turn up. Um, before I do start, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and um, comment your thoughts and... Um, Thoughts on the video and comment your tip for game two. Is the New South Wales Blues your, your backing or is the Queensland Maroons your backing? Which hope not, but you know, I expect a couple of, of those comments in the comment section. So, um, yeah, um, this is my game two preview. So, I'm gonna read out both the teams now. So, go and go through both New South Wales and Queensland Maroons side. Going for the Blues side, so at fullback James Tedesco, the wingers are Brian Toto and Daniel Tubo, the centers are Matt Burden and Stephen Crichton, while the halves are Jerome Luai and Nathan Cleary, the props are Payne Haas and Jake Javovic. And the hooker is Damien Cook. The back rows are Cameron Murray and Liam Munn, while Lock Isaiah Yo and the bench is Damien Cook, Angus Crichton, Junior Pulo, and C.O. Sivis Halaka of 18th, 18th man Nico Hines. Uh, and as for the Maroons, fullback Caleb Ponga, wingers Selwyn Cobbo and Murray Swalungi, and the centers are Valentine Holmes and Dane Gagai, while the halves are Cameron Munster and Captain Daly Cherry Evans, and the props are Lindsay Collins, Josh Papali, uh, Ben Hunt Hooker, back rows Kurt Capel, Felice Kafusi, and Lock Tino Fasu Malawi, and the bench is Harry Grant, Jai Arrow, Patrick Carrigan, Jeremiah Nanai, and the 18th man yet again is Tom Dearden. All right, as I read out those teams, I'm going to give my thoughts now. So basically analyze both sides and give uh, what I what I think I like and what I don't like personally about both sides. So um, I, look, I look at the back line for the Blues to start off with. You know, you've got Matt Burton, the centers replacing uh, this time around Katoni Staggs, who's obviously chosen... Um, Tonga for this this week because uh, Tonga playing New Zealand on Sunday obviously and uh, Origin on Sunday the next day so that's why he was out so uh, yeah Matt Burn gets his go in the centers which I don't mind um, but the only worry for me is that Burn hasn't played much center all year that, that's the thing he hasn't been playing center he's been playing more five eight this year because he was brought to the Bulldogs as, as a five eight um, <clears throat> obviously you might want to comp there uh, last year in the centers with the Panthers but. But like this year, though, it's, it's more of this year that we're talking about, you know. So I think he'll do an alright job in the centres. He's a big body, and I think he's a good defender too. So should should do alright, but it is a different game origin, and especially with him not having too much um, time playing the centres this year and coming in there to play in the centres for origin, it is, it is a bit of a tough ask and a bit of a, you know, need good preparation as well. But I think he'll handle it. I think he will. Uh, I think he's, um, you know, I think he's got the trust of everyone there, so I think he'll do alright, Burden. Um, and as as for the other changes, um, Jake Javovich in the side, um, and so, no, sorry, before I get into the forwards, um, the back line for the Blues is, is I, I, like, I like quite a bit, but I think we've found the Maroons, uh, quite back line that won the game one, Val Holmes has been in terrific form, uh, Dan Gaga always does a job in origin, and, you know, got Cobbo in the wing with, um, you know, Mario Tulangi who comes in for the injured, uh, Xavier Coates with an in with, um, yeah, and uh, what was it, a leg injury? So he'll be out for a long time, coach. So I think Tulangi, who has been in the squad, deserves his go, and I think um, he's been great for the Cowboys this year. So that's pretty much got a good feeling. Um, 
not 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 too much um, hassle with, with uh, the Maroons changes, unlike the Blues where they have heaps of changes and a bit of hassling going on there. So that's no good. But um, yeah, I think I'll take the, the Maroons back line only because they got the job done in game one. And I think uh, with the Blues back line, it's a bit, I don't know, I, I'm not too keen on it, to be honest. And not not too keen on the fact that Tupo's there and the Fox is not. I would have given the Fox another go. Um, but, you know, Tupo's there, so hopefully it's a big game. That's all you got to hope for. So, um, yeah, I think back, both back lines have a lot of points in them, but I just think um, the Maroons have the upper edge for me. As for the forward pack now, so, yes, Jake Trevojevic is one for the Blues and the forwards. I like that personally. Um, obviously, as a Manly fan, I like that, but if I'm being non-biased for a second, I think it's um, a good thing because, obviously, Jake's all about origin, brings that passion, um, brings a lot, of, uh, a lot to the table when it comes to defence, so I think that's, what, that's, that's something the Blues will need, defence. And I think in game one, our defence for the middle was a bit poor at times. So I think Jake's definitely going to clear that up and um, definitely do a job at the middle while defending there. But um, if it was for the expense of uh, ringing Campbell Gillard, then I'm sorry, but that's not good. Because Campbell Gillard was, you know, I thought he was fine in game one and I thought he's been good for Parramatta all year. And I don't think after one loss that the Blues have had, they have to drop him. So... <clears throat> I think it's a bad call, personally, dropping RCG. I, I just don't know why Freddie's done that. That's one of the many changes that Freddie has done that I don't agree with, unfortunately. But, like I said, hopefully there's a plan. Hopefully, Freddie has an idea of what he's doing. He's the coach, so he should have an idea at least. But, I don't know, dropping RCG when he was at no wrong in the in the game one and um, did, a job, did a job, I think it's pretty it's pretty wrong call. But, yeah, anyway, it, it is what it is. And then um, the other change that interests me, that is, that, that is that Damien Cook um, starts on the bench and Apisai Coro starts as a hooker. Look, um, people are saying that that's a big move and that's a, you know, I think that not many people like for some reason, but it doesn't, doesn't matter because they're both dummy halves, both of them are going to get a share fair of minutes from being on the bench or starting anyway. So, look, Appy's just there to, I guess, give a bit more uh, a bit more to the team in terms of versatility-wise and maybe support Cook as Cook, you know, Struggled in game one a, a little bit, I thought. So, I guess um, attacking-wise, a bit more impact, I think Coruscant is going to help. And I think that that will release some pressure off Cook um, because I think um, Cook needed a bit more help. Um, so, I think I'm fine with that change. But um, as to the other changes, we've uh, Tarek Sims getting dropped. So, Tarek Sims got dropped and Ryan Madison got dropped. Um, I'll tell you what, I can't believe Ryan Madison got dropped for Angus Crichton. Um, Angus Crichton's the, the guy who comes into the team and... Far out, I don't like that at all. Why, why would you drop someone that, you know, got did well for limited minutes in game one, Ryan Madison? I, I did. I shared this on Twitter as well, my thoughts on this. And, um, yeah, you know, why would you drop someone as in Ryan Madison who was good for limited minutes, uh, is a big body, can probably play a bit more in the middle than what Angus Crichton can? Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think it's pretty poor that, that change by Freddie as well. I mean, Ryan Madison's been great for him all year. Um, he played only one game, you know, that's his first ever State of Origin game in game one. Why drop him after one game? He, he's not at fault for what, four, he lost at 16-10. I mean, it's more of Freddie's fault for not playing him for longer minutes if you want to put anyone at fault for a second there. So, I think it's pretty poor for, um, that they've dropped um, Madison for Crichton. And all Angus Crichton's been... Look, I like Angus, Angus Crichton as a player, but all he's been worth for is for this year is staying on the bench for most of the time for the Roosters as he's been there probably... Um, most disappointing forward, I think, because he hasn't done much this year other than starting the bench because of poor form and yeah, he's been a couple he's been injured a couple of times too, so that's a very weird move. That is very weird. Um, and then you bring in guys in the reserves like Victor Radley, John McLean and Clint Gufferson. I know they're not playing, but they haven't done much to earn a, a earn a blues sort of call up or be in the squad. No way. I mean McLean's been decent, but fuck what, what's he done that deserves a blues jersey? Um, or a call-up to the New South Wales Blues squad, at least. Um, <clears throat> and then you got also Clint Gufferson. I mean, Gufferson's done nothing as well. I mean, he's a good player, but... Oh, come on, Gufferson, really? You're not even going to consider the Fox or Graham, who have been probably better form? Come on, Freddie. And, um, yeah, and um, who else? Yeah, um, Radley. Radley's barely, barely played this year. He's barely played a good number of games. He's been suspended, injured... Uh, nowhere near a Blues jersey, but if that's because of Roosters bias, <laughs> who knows? But yeah, I don't know. The forward pack is good, I think, with Pulo, um, you know, off the, off the bench and Haas there, and I think it's a stronger looking one. But the Maroons one's pretty good as well. I know they've lost Ruben Cotter in the forwards, but 
Um, when you have Papali, Tino, Carrigan, who was obviously one of the one of the best players in game one, I think that's a pretty strong forward pack. And you know, the only change for them in the forward pack is that Jai Arrow comes in the team on the bench, so I think that's a pretty good thing. Arrow is obviously a solid player, and I think he'll do a job for the Maroons. And obviously, he comes in for Ruben Cotter, I suppose, who's out with um, hamstring. So um, yeah, I think I take the. I will take the Blues forward pack only by a fragment, but the Maroons one's not too far away. I mean, they're pretty much 50-50, both equal. But, yeah, I will take the Blues one there, I think, this time around. Now, onto the key talking points to me now. So, this is basically where I talk about things I've heard during the week that, that um, are probably key to sort of mention and uh, discuss about. So, um, yeah, there's three things. Uh, two things about the Blues I'm keen to talk about and discuss, whereas there's only one thing with the Maroons, as they're a bit more settled than what the Blues are, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, so look look at uh, the first one, Matt Burton in the centres, um, over Graham, over, you know, <clears throat> you know, over, I guess, I guess over Staggs, but Staggs is playing for Tonga, that's right, so that, that doesn't really count. But, um, yeah, it's more about whether Matt Burton was the right choice or not. And person, I think he was. I think he's he is the right choice. I mean, we don't have much depth anyway, so it, that's probably why he has to play there. But as I said earlier, I don't, I don't want to repeat myself. But I did say it earlier that you know he hasn't been playing much um, center this year. He's been brought to the Bulldogs as a five eight, and that's where he's been predominantly playing. Uh, and, and like I said, he won a comp in the centers last year at the, Pan, at the Panthers, right? But um, look, it's different playing in the centers in Origin where you haven't been playing in that role all season at club level. But then you go to rep level at Blues, and he's all of a sudden a centre rather than 5'8". So that's the thing. And uh, how he handles that, I hope he goes well. But again, people are saying that, you know, Jack Wine's a big loss, which he is, and obviously that's why Burns in because he's a replacement for Jack Wine. So you've got to hope he does well. Um, Talakai's there, which I don't like. He's a waste of space. Talakai has clocked off as a player. Uh, or, his, or his form's clocked off a little bit, I should say. Not as a player, but his form's clocked off the past couple of weeks, ever since that Manly game warm. In the game where Sharks played Broncos and he was up against Stags and there was all that hype and talk around that. But ever since he got showed up by Stags, he hasn't done much, has he? So uh, people are saying that he should have started the centres, which I don't agree with at all. I personally, you know, would disregard any any talk like that because I don't think Taylor Kai is, you know, the right option, for, right option to start the centres, you know. I don't think he's um, that reliable because his, his form hasn't been consistent. So why pick, an, why pick an inconsistent player in the starting side, you know what I mean? Um, there was Campbell Graham. I would have picked Campbell Graham. I would have definitely had him there. I think Campbell Graham has been, has been solid for the Rabbitohs all year. I know South has been a little bit up and down in, in terms of form, but he's been one of the more, more better players, in my opinion. He's definitely given it a go. He's definitely looked very solid there. Um, defensive, defensively, he's pretty good, and in attack, he's pretty strong as well. So um, I don't know why Freddie didn't really uh, discuss him too much. Maybe they did, but didn't pick him for some reason. But, oh, well. Uh, Matt, Matt Burns is starting center now, so all you're going to hope for is that he does well for us Blues. And now on to the next one. This one's about Ryan Madison and Regan Campbell-Gillard both getting dropped, which I think is a terrible call. Uh, starting with Campbell-Gillard, well, like I said this as well. Campbell-Gillard is obviously a very, very good player. Uh, great for the Eels this year. And uh, just returning to the Blues this year after a couple of years, already gets dropped. And I can't believe that because I think he's been great. Um, for the Blues every time he's played. I mean, it's one game. Like, this is the same with Madison as well. One game, they come in, and but then they both get dropped the next next week. You can't blame them for the loss. It was more of a, you know, it was more of a half sort of thing on while he lost. I mean, Luai Cleary didn't really stand up, um, or especially Cleary as a halfback. And, you know, obviously the forwards weren't, weren't too great, but I think, you know, I'd be taking more aim at probably guys like Haas and, and all that, and uh, probably Cook as well for not lay a platform basically in the forwards and I think Madison I mean before I get to Madison it's this is about Campbell Gillow quickly I think Campbell Gillow was hard done by I think he did nothing wrong to lose his spot I thought he had a solid opening game one and I thought he did a good job so for, for Freddie to drop him I think it's a poor call in my opinion I definitely would have given Campbell Gillow more of a go and more opportunity in game two but he's not there anymore um, replacing him up front is Jake Dravojevic which I think is a tough call because Jake hasn't been great this year but he is someone that does a job, someone that brings a lot of passion to the uh, state of origin or blue side, I should say, and brings a lot to the origin arena. So I like how he's there, but definitely would have had him on the bench instead, in my opinion. Um, on the bench instead of um, Angus Crichton, that's for sure. Um, but now with Ryan Madison, yeah, look, Ryan Madison is, is the exact same. He played well with limited minutes. I mean, it's not his fault that 
you know, he couldn't play many more, much more minutes. You know, like I said before, it was more Freddie's fault more than anything because Freddie should have definitely played for much longer. Then you would have got a bit better indication whether he should have stayed for next game or not. So I think Ryan Madison even dropped a very stupid call too. Um, I don't, I don't want to ramble on too much because I, I've already said this as well with Angus Crichton, you know. All he's done this year has been benched by the Roosters and, you know, that, that, that's a be bringing him in after poor form after the Roosters this year. Very, very stupid in my opinion. But, yeah, uh, it's one of the many changes that Freddie's done for Game 2 that had looked really bad. I mean, I mean, bring Radley, Talakai in. Don't like that. I know Radley's not even playing, but in the in the reserves still, what's he done to get in the reserves? He's barely played this year. You know, Jordan McLean's solid, but nowhere near Blues jumper. Far out. We'll get a mention the Blues sort of squad. Um, so, yeah, it's confusing what Freddie's done, but look, look. It is what it is. He's done it, and um, hopefully it works down the end. And as for the last one, Murray Solangi coming in for the Maroons. Um, yes, yeah, look, there's not many too, too many talking points for the Maroons. I mean, what it is is Ruben Cotter's obviously the big one with his loss because he was obviously one of their best players in game one. And I guess losing him is going to lessen the impact on the forwards a bit. But I think the other one I'm going to talk about is um, how big of a loss um, Coates is now. Now, he's not a big loss, okay? He's not a big loss. I don't mean it as a terrible loss, but I guess just stability in the wing because he's been there... And he's been there for quite a while on the wing. For a couple of years now, he's stayed there. I mean, for, for, good, for a good two years, he's been consistent staying on the wing for the Maroons. But Tulangi, uh, a very good player. Um, definitely his breakout year this year for the Cowboys, scoring a lot more tries, looking more of a, a stronger winger than what, what he was the past couple of years. And I think he's starting to find his feet in first um, in first grade and, you know, as a player in general. Um, but what I worry is that, you know, how he will go in the arena. Now, we shouldn't be worried at all because Cobo played his first game in game one and he, he's only played like 20 good games. So he was fine. He handled it pretty well. Um, but I just think for Talangi, you know, there's a lot of pressure. You know you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of pressure because this is a game where they could close out, close it out and um, make sure that they, I guess, win the series for this year, which I hope not. But it is a real opportunity to win it this year, especially with how we've lined up. It's not, not as great. So... I think for Talangi, you know, it's going to be tough because he's versing um, Daniel Tupo on that side. And I think, you know, when you look at Coates and Tupo, it's a bit more of a better battle because both of them can jump and both of them are a bit more taller. But as for Talangi, he's a bit more of a shorter sort of winger, but he's strong though. So that'll be a good, an interesting battle. And I have no doubt that they'll they'll target that side of Talangi up against Tupo because Tupo has obviously got the height advantage and, and everything like that. So hopefully Talangi handles the pressure for his sake, but for Queensland's, for Queensland's sake, no. But that's my key talking points there. All right, on to the final segment now of um, the preview. This is my tip and prediction for the game. So basically my tip for the match, um, who I'm tipping to win, and my predictions are just based on first try scorer, any time try scorer, and um, basically just um, who I think man the match will be. So um, my tip for the game... Yes, it's um, obviously very tempting to the Blues because I, I obviously support them and I, I want to tip them because, um, you know, if I don't for a second time in a row, it's going to look bad. But I can't see how or where we'll go with this side because all these changes, right, they, they don't make sense, most of them. And um, I think Freddie's losing the plot with what he's doing. I just don't think that this team can back up in any anything. Um you know, I know, I hope and I know that they will probably turn up in game two because hopefully they realise their mistakes in game one and turn up in game two. But I know, and, I, and I also know that they probably will be a better side. So, but so will Queensland. They'll know that they have to go again in game two and definitely back up uh, that win and uh, not slack off for another time. But um, yeah, but my tip for the game, unfortunately, we're going to go Maroons here. I think the Maroons are going to be a bit too strong. They, they beat us last time for the four pack in the middle and uh, Munster. Uh, Holmes, you know, base, basically them carve us up and, you know, Cherry Evans and Ponga were pretty good too. So I expect them to sort of just have put another masterclass in Perth and I think the Blues will come close but not close enough because I think um, what the stability of the team looks like and what Freddie's doing just doesn't seem right in my opinion. So I think Queensland will be a bit too strong. I'm going to go Queensland probably by six points. So I'm going to go with a scoring of... Queensland 20, um, Queensland 20, Blues 14 by 6 points. And um, my first try score is going to be a, a winger this time. And I think the Blues will score first. I'm, I'm pretty confident the Blues will score first yet again. And I think it'll be through Brian Totter on the wing. I think he'll score a try. And then uh, my anytime try scorer, 
I think um, Munster will score a try, and I think um, I, I, I like uh, I like for the Blues like a forward scoring, and I think um, Mario will score a try. I think he got one in game one, and he'll get another one in game two. I predict. Um, yeah, obviously my first try to score Brian Toto, and I think um, the fullback will score two for the Maroons. I think Ponga is going to score a try, and um, I like Colbo for his first try too, and one more for Blues. <clears throat> I think the center will score, and I think that would be um, Matt Byrne on debut. I think Matt Byrne will score a try on debut. I just see him going for a, making a nice run for a hole and scoring, but uh, we'll see. I, I, I think at least one of the centers will score, either him or Cron will score. One of them will score. I'm guaranteeing it. Um, but anyway, and my man in the match for the game, well, I think uh, Queensland's win, unfortunately, so I think the man in the match is going to be Ponga. I expect Ponga to have a big game in game two, and I think he's going to get a couple of tries this and score a try himself, so I'm going to go Ponga for man in the match, but Anyway, everyone, that's my Game 2 State of Origin preview for 2022 in Optus Stadium at Perth. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, comment your tip for the game. Go the Blues!